Good morning. Um, I'm Laura Buxbaum. My, uh, our, um, we were in the dwindling uh, USDA Rural Development uh, Resources Group, which doesn't sound very inspiring, <laughs> but uh, I think we came up with some positive outcomes. Um, our note taker was, uh, I thought, going to bring the large notes, um, and he didn't, so I'm gonna squint at my pictures of them if you will bear with me. Uh, so our um, session was facilitated by uh, Tom Collishaw and Sullivan McGahey, who also wrote a provocative uh, two-pager uh, on this issue. Uh, and it posed, it posed some interesting questions about whether the resources are dwindling to the point where, you know, sh should we even continue to advocate for them? Uh, are there other ways to create affordable housing in rural areas? Um, oh, there he is. I wasn't gonna name any names, Mike. Or <laughs> um, great, thank you. Uh, um, and we started out by, thank you, by talking about, um, uh, well, first of all, I think there was, there was general agreement that the, that the programs are very valuable and we do want to continue to advocate for them. But we started out by continuing the, the discussion that Moises had uh, with the secretary about, well, should they maybe go somewhere else? Maybe should they go to HUD? Um, and there was very strong consensus that, uh, the, uh, that the programs are designed in such a way that um, another agency couldn't necessarily take them on, that rural development has its own structures and processes in place that generally work very well, and that we need to um, continue to advocate for them uh, where they are, uh, but advocate for more resources and for changes that will make the programs work better for us. Um, the other uh, issue that came up very early on was that we had in the room um, some people who uh, had a very uh, a, a single family perspective and others who had more of a multifamily perspective and, and there was uh, fear expressed that the uh, renewal burden for, for rental assistance was going to balloon so much that all the other programs, single family in particular, were gonna get squeezed out. Um, we agreed that that is a danger and a threat, but we also came to a strong consensus that we all need to advocate for all of these programs and that it isn't gonna help us if we end up allowing ourselves to be pitted against each other. So um, that was a, um, a principle that we all agreed on to begin with. Um, we, uh, talked about, um, so we talked about ways to uh, increase the resource. Uh, there was discussion that I think we've all uh, already heard over the last couple of days that there's a view that the administration requests are consistently too low for programs. We heard loud and clear the secretary's feeling that uh, we focus on programs and not on salaries and expenses that he feels he needs, that, that they need to run these programs. Um, but, uh, we, you know, we continue to think that the programs are the most, most important and that we need to work with RD to find ways to deliver them efficiently and effectively and, um, you know, uh, n not to the exclusion of, of increasing salaries and expenses, but can, um, can RD use nonprofits more and more effectively as uh, is happening to some extent with the 502 packaging? Um, are there other resources that can be brought in that can that can help uh, these programs be sustained? Um, we qu asked the question: what, because there's been pretty strong Republican support for these programs, where you know the administration again has um, uh, put forward low numbers, and um, Republican appropriators in particular have uh, added money back in, is a Republican Congress actually an opportunity for us? Maybe in the short run, but we also acknowledged that the <coughs> overall um, atmosphere in the Congress is one of cutting, not expanding, and uh, that also possibly this is a different makeup in the House, particularly of, of Republicans who may be uh, more conservative and, and uh, understand our programs less. So we're not sure if that's an opportunity or not, but we'll continue to rely on um, the folks who have supported these programs and go back to them and try to get the word out to others. Um, uh, we also, and we also noted that other programs that work well with uh, our programs, particularly multifamily like CDBG and Home, are also shrinking and so there's a need 
uh, in the long run to try to expand the pie. Uh, we didn't talk very much about how to do that. Um, you know, I think, I think uh, we're hoping to get through the next couple of years. Uh, we talked about um, ways that the department, with our help, maybe could um, reduce some costs uh, or, or um, make things work better. Uh, we acknowledge the work that Administrator Hernandez has been doing with the multifamily staff. Some of us were at a meeting on Tuesday and heard about some improved processes. Um, we're really uh, excited to see what's going to happen uh, with that and whether that will help, uh, particularly uh, the, the process of transferring um, multifamily 515 housing uh, from existing owners to new owners who will rehab and preserve it. Uh, that will um, that will be a big help in stabilizing the situation, and so we want to support efforts like that uh, that will improve the processes, make that make um, not just multifamily uh, but other kinds of refinancing or or uh, uh, development processes uh, work more efficiently, uh, work better, um, uh, take advantage of our resources as much as possible. Um, we talked about. Um, other tools that might be helpful, um, some of the suggestions were if non-RD debt could be refinanced, uh, that could help uh, free up some resources. Um, we talked about the housing trust, the, the National uh, Housing Trust as a potential resource for multifamily housing, uh, and, I th and I think single family housing too, I'm not, sh um, we, we talked about it possibly being uh, used for very low income, extremely low income folks, but uh, there's some possibility there. Um, and we are hoping that uh, uh, Mel Watt does um, begin to release s some funds to the Housing Trust so that we can start to see how it can work uh, and that in the longer run that uh, we can advocate for housing finance reform legislation that will, that will provide a lot more money to the Housing Trust Fund. Um, we, uh, I think I mentioned home and CDBG funding. We agreed that we need to advocate for that as well. Um, and uh, let's see. The big question for us is can the zero sum game be broken? And that's not just within USDA. Clearly that is uh, for federal programs as a whole. Um, and I don't think we answered that question, but I think that's, that's kind of our mm. Uh, charge going forward is to uh, get the word out that uh, all of these programs that help to provide and preserve rural housing, uh, affordable housing in rural areas uh, are valuable, are needed, are cost efficient. We can make them more so, we can make them work better, uh, but we need to continue to advocate for them. Um, we also uh, noted that there is a new undersecretary of rural development who started this week. Lisa Mensa, and so that's a possible opportunity to help support some of the things that Administrator, uh, Administrator Hernandez and his staff are working on. Uh, we should get to know her and uh, offer our assistance and ideas and hear what she has to say. Um, so in summary, we want to continue to advocate for essential programs at USDA. We want to help uh, USDA find ways to reduce operating costs. Um, uh, we want to um, this is a little bit repetitive, but pursue administrative and legislative ways to reduce, oh no, I'm sorry, pursue administrative and legislative ways to reduce uh, rental assistance costs. Um, we talked also, uh, uh, Larry mentioned the possibility of using existing reserves uh, to save a bunch of money. Um, and uh, we want to, uh, one of the uh, recommendations was to uh, try to centralize the guaranteed single family um, home program nationally. The, is that right? Yes. Oh, okay, so that had to do with processing of uh, 502 guarantee um, and that it could be more efficient if it was if it was centralized. Did I get that right, uh, Baruch? I know I see somebody here. Okay, thank you very much.